So today we're going to look at a lesser known test for convergence for a series known as Rob's test. And so this is somewhat of a generalization of the ratio test. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So let's suppose that we've got a sequence of positive real numbers, I'll call them a sub n, and they satisfy the following rule. So L is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of n times a n over a n plus one minus one. And then here are the conditions and the results. So if L is bigger than zero, then the series divided by a sub n converges. If L is less than one, then the associated series diverges. And then if L is equal to one, this test is inconclusive. And then after we look at maybe a proof of one part of this theorem, this test called Rob's test, we'll look at an example. Okay, so the part that we'll prove is this divergence part, the part where L is less than one, and then a pretty quick adaptation will give you the convergence part. The inconclusive part really requires you to find two different series. One that satisfies this L equals one rule that converges and another that diverges. Okay, so anyway, let's look at this case when L is less than one. So that means we can find a number that I'll call T, which is between L and one. So I'll write it as being on the interval from L to one, such that the terms of our sequence, so this n times a n over a n plus one minus one is less than t for all n bigger than or equal to some capital N. And this some capital N will depend on how close that t is to the limiting value. Okay, so let's maybe talk our way through why this works, and this is related to the proper definition of the limit. Okay, so let's say we've got this number line. Over here we'll put the number L, and over here we'll put the number one. And let's say we've chosen our number T to be right about there. And then from that choice of T, I'd like to, to define a number epsilon and that number epsilon will be the difference between L and T. Great, and then from there, I'll make an open interval, maybe an epsilon bubble around L. And let's notice that this epsilon bubble will be of the form L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. But in this case, it's L minus epsilon to T, just based on how we defined T. And then recall that for all epsilon, we can find a capital N so that the terms of our sequence will land in an epsilon neighborhood of L like this. But notice anything that lands in here will be in here. In other words, it'll be less than T, which is what we said right here. Okay, so we're good to go there. And now let's start unraveling this inequality and see what we get. So pretty quickly we'll get a n over a n plus one is less than t over n plus one. But then we can push this inequality further to the right by using a well-known inequality involving the exponential function. We can put an e to the t over n here. And like I said, this inequality is well known. But now we can flip this around and we'll see that a n plus one is bigger than a n times e to the minus t over n. Great, so that's just flipping the inequality here. But notice that this is gonna hold for all values of little n bigger than or equal to capital N. So that means we could extend this all the way down until we hit capital N. And so if we do that, we get the following kind of larger inequality. So we have a n plus one is bigger than a sub capital N times e to the minus t times one over capital N plus one over capital N plus one all the way up to one over lowercase n. So again, that's just from applying this over and over and over again. But now what we'll do here is complete this sum of reciprocals. So that'll give us something like this. So this is gonna be equal to a sub capital N 
times e to the minus t times one plus one half all the way up to one over lowercase n. But then we've just included some stuff. So let's maybe multiply by something that will neutralize what we've included that wasn't there before. And that'll be e to the t times um, one plus half all the way to one over n minus one. And this capital N is fixed. So we don't have to worry about that when we like take a limit or anything. Okay, nice. But now let's maybe call this thing B and note that we've got this nice inequality that we have all of this is bigger than A sub N and then times this uh, number B times e to the minus t, and then, well, this one plus half all the way up to one over n can be bound by a logarithm. And it's bound by a logarithm, so the inequality goes in the right direction. So let's put this inequality down here, and then the logarithm will be a log n. But now notice we've got an e to the minus t times log n, and that can be simplified using logarithm rules and the fact that the logarithm is the inverse function of the exponential. And that'll leave us with a sub capital N times b over n to the t. Okay, so let's see what we have. So for all lowercase n bigger than our capital N, the terms of our series, a sub n plus one, are bigger than this thing right here. And so that's a constant in the numerator and an n to the t in the denominator. But we know that a sum like this diverges because this number t is less than one. Uh, because notice t is between l and one. That's by the p-series test, if you will. But since this thing diverges and our terms are larger than that, then that means our series also must diverge. And that finishes the proof of this portion. And like I said, this portion is quite similar. Okay, so now let's look at an example. Okay, so for our example, we'll determine all natural numbers p. And I'm doing all natural numbers, but this could pretty easily be extended to all real numbers using this result. Okay, so all natural numbers p so that the sum is n goes from 1 to infinity of 2n minus 1 double factorial over 2n double factorial to the pth power converges. So let's recall that double factorial gives you a descending product going two terms at a time. So for example, 5 double factorial is 5 times 3 times 1. 6 double factorial would be 6 times 4 times 2 and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's maybe quickly show that the ratio test here is inconclusive. And recall that the ratio test requires us to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one over a n. And if this limit is less than one, then we get convergence. If it's equal to one, it's inconclusive. And if it's bigger than one, we get divergence. And no absolute values are required here because those are all positive terms. Okay, so anyway, let's see what we have here. This is gonna be the limit as n goes to infinity. The a n plus one term will be something like this. We'll have two n plus one double factorial over 2n plus 2 double factorial times 2n double factorial over 2n minus 1 double factorial, and that'll be all raised to the p. Okay, so this first term is a relic of this a n plus 1 portion, and then this second term is coming from this a n portion. We just have to take the reciprocal there. But now, by the way, factorial type objects cancel, we'll have this 2n minus one double factorial, cancel this 2n plus one double factorial down just to a 2n plus one. And then likewise, we'll have this 2n plus two double factorial get canceled down just to a 2n plus two by the 2n double factorial. And so in the end, we have 2n plus one, over 2n plus 2 raised to the p power. 
but the inside of that converges to one, so we get one to the p, which is the number one. So that means this thing is inconclusive. So since it's inconclusive, well, we need another test. And that's where we're gonna use the test that we've been looking at today, Rob's test. And so that means we need to look at something of the form, the limit as n goes to infinity of n times a n over a n plus one minus one. So something like that. Okay, nice. But notice that we've already calculated a n plus one over a n, so we might as well use that here with the reciprocal. So that's gonna leave us with the limit as n goes to infinity, we have n, and then a n over a n plus one will give us, let's see, two n plus two over two n plus one, raised to the p power, we have minus one there. Okay, good. But now what we'll do is take this two n plus two over two n plus one and write it as one plus one over two n plus one. I think that's pretty clear how we can do that. It's because two n plus two is two n plus one plus one. Okay, so now let's rewrite that. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of n times, so we've got one plus one over two n plus one raised to the p power minus one. And now we use a binomial expansion here, but notice that the zeroth term in the binomial expansion will be a one, that'll cancel with this minus one. So we'll just include the terms after that. So the first term after that will be a p times one over two n plus one. That's because we've got p choose one times, well that thing right there. And then the next thing will be a p choose two times one over two n plus one quantity squared and so on and so forth. But that's gonna be a finite sum. I just put the dot, dot, dot. Okay, but now let's notice that all of the terms here out will have a n squared type term in the denominator. But since they have an n squared type term in the denominator, when they get multiplied by n and n is approaching infinity, they will tend off towards zero because the exponent of n in the denominator is larger than it is in the numerator. And so that leaves us with, well, what's essentially the limit is n goes to infinity of n over two n plus one times p. So that will give us with p over two. Okay, so that p over two is our value of L. So if p over two is bigger than one, we get convergence. So in other words, if p is bigger than two, we get convergence just by multiplying by two. If p is less than two, we get divergence. And then if p is equal to two, we're not sure what happens because that's inconclusive. Okay, so let's put a box around this. This is what we know so far. This is our P test, if you will, for that crazy series. And now let's see if we can evaluate the P equals two case. And we're gonna use a new series test. We won't end up proving that one though. Okay, so we just determined that if P is bigger than two, our crazy series over there converges. If it's less than two, it diverges. Now we're gonna look at what happens if it's equal to two. And we're gonna use a bonus series test that we haven't talked about yet. And that looks like this. So if we set L equal to the limit as N goes to infinity of the natural log of N times N times A N over A N plus one minus one and then minus one, then we get convergence if L is bigger than one, divergence if L is less than one, and then if L is equal to one, well, we're not sure what happens anymore. Okay, so let's maybe use this bonus test to see if we can determine what happens when P is equal to two. Okay, so that means we need to look at the limit as N goes to infinity of, well, those terms plugged in here. So let's see, we'll have this natural log of n out front of everything, and then we'll have an n times this a n over a n plus one. But we know what that is from our previous calculation. That's gonna be two n plus two over two n plus one. But then we need to square that. And then from that we subtract one, and then we finally subtract one, and then, well, we've gotta work that from the inside out. 
But now I'm gonna skip some steps just to make this go a little bit quicker because what's going on in here is just straightforward symbolic manipulation. And so what we end up with is the natural log of n times, well, we're gonna have minus n minus one over 4n squared plus 4n plus one. And again, that's just from straightforward symbolic manipulation of what's happening in those big parentheses. But now let's see, as n goes to infinity, natural log of n approaches infinity but then this rational function approaches zero. So we have an indeterminate form of type um, infinity times zero. And so in order to write that as a more proper indeterminate form, maybe it would be something like this. I'm gonna take this minus sign out front, and then we have the limit as n goes to infinity, and then we'll have a natural log of n in the numerator, and then in the denominator, we'll have a four n squared plus four n plus one over n plus one. So something like that. But then it's pretty easy to use polynomial long division to rewrite that denominator a little bit to make it easier to work with. And in fact, what we'll get is four n plus one over n plus one. And so you can check that if you smush those two pieces back together, you get exactly this. And now we can apply L'Hopital's rule to this pretty easily. So here we're gonna have a minus, the limit as n goes to infinity, taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator, we have a one over n in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we'll have a four minus one over n plus one quantity squared. But now let's see, as n goes to infinity, this term goes to zero, so the denominator looks like it's gonna be four, but then the numerator also goes to zero. So that means this limit is equal to zero. But notice zero is most definitely less than one, so that means this p equals two case also diverges which gives us a complete classification of when our series up there converges. Well, at least the classification when P is a natural number. I'll leave it as a homework exercise to think about what happens if P is not a natural number. The only thing that's a little bit tricky to check is what's happening when P is between two and three. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.